Richard is a doughty knight who needs no urging to create impressions of great wealth and might with a borrowed silver plate. Good morrow, friend. What market are you taking your wares to? No market. My trade is with private patrons. Oh, what kind of trade is that? What is yours that it makes you so curious? I'm an outlaw. I pray you don't make any sudden moves, friends. My men are liable to shoot hastily if they think that I'm endangered. I'm afraid my goods wouldn't interest you, Master Outlaw. I am a dealer in books, a stationarius of London, and I am delivering these volumes at Whitby Abbey for the monks there to copy. I make it a rule never to take books. Oh, Geoffrey of Monmouth. Yes, the Historia Regum Britanniae. His account of the sad ending of King Lear. You know it? Only by report. But I'd be interested to read his version of the court of King Arthur. You're a most remarkable outlaw. And you are a most remarkable stationarius. Taking a book to Whitby Abbey for copying that they have had in their library for more than two years. May I examine it? No, you may not. It is... Uh, what? Do you have iron inside the leather for the cover? Or is it full of stones to make it harder for the animal? Don't you dare touch it. It's a work of great literature. What a wonderful sight. What a literary discovery. These volumes will make heavy reading. Nevertheless, I think we should submit each one of them to the most scholarly investigation. I never dreamed we'd be rich. No need to worry about those winter supplies now, eh, Robin? We can melt down the gold and sell the precious jewels. We can buy four suits of Lincoln Green apiece with fur trimming. We can lay in a wonderful stock of sack and of marmosey. I'd like to buy an iron sluice gate, dam up the brook, and make a little pool for swimming. Now, let's not forget our friends in the villages. No, no, there are many who must share in our good fortune. Let's celebrate with a great feast and invite... It's the Lady Marion. Marion, you're just in time to help us plan a celebration feast. And you shall have the costliest gown... Robin, the I have the most urgent message. Message from whom? From Queen Eleanor. Prince John has stolen her plates of Byzantine gold. Her plates of gold? Yes, encrusted with jewels. They were the treasure of the House of Aquitaine. She brought them with her to England when she married King Henry. John stole them from his own mother? He claims they belong to the crown. The Queen Mother has information that he's sending them to the goldsmiths of York to have them melted down. Why are you looking so sad? You looked so gay when I came. This is very sad news you bring. A disaster. Sad, yes, for Queen Eleanor. They were the only possessions of value she'd left. Is there anything you can do to recover the treasure, Robin? I've already recovered it. We had the money practically spent. So that's why you were all looking so miserable. Do we really have to return all that lovely loot? I'm afraid so. Take it. No, Robin. It's up to you to deliver it. Isn't it enough to have to give it back without having to deliver it? All right, what's the plan? The idea is that you take the plates to the castle of Sir Richard of the Lee. Why Sir Richard? He's loyal. The Queen Mother hasn't heard that he's come upon hard times. She still thinks of him as one of the gallant champions around King Henry's court. Then we won't even get a good dinner for our trouble. While you're doing this, I'll ride to York to notify the Archbishop. The Archbishop? He's very worried about this matter. In the letter, Queen Eleanor says that he'll come himself to recover the treasure if it's found. Well, off to Sir Richard. Nice being rich. It won't do, Sir Richard. It simply won't do. You're asking me to make a complete outfit, head to toe, of the finest Syrian steel. Of course. You know as well as I do that nothing stands up in real tournament jousting like Syrian. But you owe me for last year's armor. You lost that in the very first tournament, along with your horse. My horse tumbled. That is precisely why I have to go to the tournaments now. 
to pay your bill and a few other outstanding items. But supposing you lose again? The devil, man! You wouldn't say that if you'd seen me in Coventry in 1167. I'm sorry, Sir Richard. If you want me to work up something from a few plates of domestic metal, for old time's sake... My dear fellow, you know as soon as the harvest comes in, I'll have the money. But my fields, the crops... We won't have to rivet it together. Uh, just a few leather thongs to last you through the <coughs> first judge. But, but you don't understand... Yes, Nicholas. I must speak to you, Sir Richard. You know my squire. Squire? He looks old enough <coughs> to be... 27 years as an esquire and nine as a page before that. I should be dead before... Oh, ever... nonsense, Nicholas. You know perfectly well that I intend to have you knighted as soon as I can clear the title of a patch of land to make an estate for you. Mm. <laughs> you have a visitor. Excuse us. A most unusual visitor from the forest. Master Armourer? Yes, my lady. You can be going along now. Uh, what about Sir Richard? I don't want him to have a new suit of armour any more than you do. His tournament days are over. I understand, my lady. You know your way out by the postern gate. I do. Thank you, Master Armourer. Thank you, my lady. Of course I have a strong room. Who would build a castle without one? <laughs> I think you're entitled to a look at what the Queen Mother is entrusting to your hands. Little John. Go. Pure go and real gems. The value of these plates must be truly enormous, Sir Richard. I hope you guard them well. What beautiful craftsmanship. Worth a fortune. How wonderful to own such a work of art. Well, I've delivered them into your hands. That's all I undertook to do. Nicholas, see my friends to the gate. I lock the door. I have my armorer and the solar. You know what these craftsmen are. Goodbye, and a safe journey. I'll guard that key carefully. I will. Goodbye, Sir Richard. Bye. <laughs> Just one more measurement, Sir Richard. Thank you. Now, you'll need chainmail hose of the finest mesh. Uh, two changes of it. And uh, what about the spurs? A Spanish gold, I should think. But I already owe you. Please, don't speak about money. It's a matter of complete indifference to me when you pay. But I must know how much it's going to cost. As a matter of fact, until the harvest. <laughs> then we'll wait till after the harvest. A man has no need of coin when he has treasure in his strong room to back up his credit. Ah, yes, credit. <laughs> of course, <laughs> so true. <laughs> money isn't the only wealth. I shall work day and night forsaking all other tasks until your order is complete. <laughs> <clears throat> May I thank your lordship again for the distinguished honor of your generous patronage. <laughs> A good day. Good day. Oh, and those spurs. Uh, yes, Sir Richard. Spanish gold will be fine. Uh, yes, Sir Richard. Spanish gold? Richard, are you quite right in the head? I think so, my dear. I'm merely making sure that my appearance at the tournaments this season shall in no way reflect on our good name. And what about our debts? Every day the porter is besieged by the tradesmen of Nottingham. Mm. Now they've threatened to go to the sheriff. I shall threaten them in return. I shall cut off their trade. You will cut off their trade? Mm. Oh, really, Richard? Why, they won't even supply us with the basic necessities. The spice are... My lifelong devotion to the Queen Mother has provided me with the means to show them the folly of their behaviour. I shall ask them to dinner tomorrow. You will do what? Yes. I see no reason why we shouldn't use a little harmless deception to ease our way through these troublous times. I shall ask them to dinner tomorrow. And I shall not be present. Hmm. What is this all about? Have you any idea? It was like a message from a king. Well, if he isn't here, why did he send for us? Good masters, your attention. Sir Richard of the Lee. Good day, good day, good day. Won't you sit down, sit down. <coughs> Oh, 
Maguash if I'd known I would have to drink it myself. Can this be pure gold? Look at those precious stones. Uh, yes, uh, nice plates. <clears throat> A great craftsman, those Byzantines. <clears throat> pure goldsmith. Tell me, are these plates real? Oh, yes, yes. That's real, all right. <clears throat> veal? Oh, no, I can't. It's too beautiful. Oh, Mr. Spicer, don't you like veal? No, I, I do. It's just that, well, I don't want to... I'd rather just look at your plates. Yes, they're uh, nice things to have around the house. I've been wanting to talk to you for some time, Sir Richard. I've just had an importation of the finest spice. So now let me tell them about my new silks. I have some barrels of the choicest marmalade I could lend. make a special price for pepper and other spices in large quantities. Please, and I... please, do not let us have this vulgar talk of commerce while we eat. You will have plenty of time to take my orders later. Thinking of making some plates like these, Goldsmith? I was thinking of making one, yes. <laughs> enough gold and precious stones in your shop to make even a spoon to match these. Mm. I was thinking of making an imitation from base metal and glass. One of my customers is a connoisseur of such things and uh, might care to see the design. These Norman lords you work for came off for their stomachs than they do for objects of art. True, but my best customer, uh, the sheriff's lieutenant, is a true connoisseur. He is interested in precious things, particularly when they suddenly appear. I'm not in the mood to buy any of your trinkets today, Master Goldsmith. I didn't come here to show you trinkets. I came to show you this. Observe the gold and precious stones. The cunning blend of oriental colors. The design derived from ancient Rome. It's one of them. It must be. Let me see. But is this genuine? It doesn't look like <laughs> It isn't. Huh? I made this plate myself last night from base metal and bits of colored glass. And where are the real ones? Where did you see the design? Under my very nose at dinner yesterday. A whole set, just like this one, except that every stone was genuine and perfect. And the gold was so pure, it seemed almost liquid. You saw them at dinner yesterday? Where did you dine so regally, Master Goldsmith? At the castle of Sir Richard of the Lee. I know this treasure. It was stolen in Sherwood Forest, though it was hidden most ingeniously. Robin Hood. But why should he give it to Sir Richard? I don't know yet. But I'm going to Sir Richard's castle to find out. And if it is stolen treasure, I am empowered in the sheriff's absence to seize it. And with all that gold in my hands... A beautiful fit, Sir Richard. Mm. Lovely. I do hope you won't mind if I... Uh rivet a little label on it, so everybody will know that I made it. Uh, concealed, of course. Then how would everybody know you made it? Well, I don't really know. Oh. <laughs> but I've heard it's the practice of the best armourers in London. You will have to go now, Master Armourer. Sir Richard has a visitor. But, my sweet, we are not through with the fitting yet. Oh, yes, you are. This is a very important visitor. Uh, ah, welcome. You were entrusted with a grave responsibility. I know that. No one has to tell me how important. Friar Tuck reports that Nottingham Town is abuzz with the word that you were newly rich. Newly rich? What insolence! Our family has owned property for years. They say that you dine off gold plate of fabulous value. Oh, that! Um, well, um, well, you see, Robin, um, since those plates were lying rather fallow, as it were, I uh, invited some of the local merchants to dinner, just to stop them dunning me with those wretched little accounts. Didn't you realize how much talk that would cause? Talk? Is it so unusual one of the oldest families in England should have a few gold plates around the house? The value of that plate would buy the Shire. Now that the news is out, the plate is no longer safe here. Don't you realize that the Norman vultures are planning even now how to get their hands on the treasure? I'd take my sword to anyone who'd rob my house. Sir Richard! Sir Richard! The sheriff's lieutenant is at the gate with men at arms. 
The vultures begin to arrive. I'll go to the gate myself. Don't worry, I won't admit him. <laughs> Where is the key to the strong room, my lady? We must bury that treasure somewhere till the Archbishop arrives. Oh, Sir Richard takes his responsibility as guardian of the Queen Mother's treasure very seriously. The key is round his neck. Sir Richard, I want words with you. Open the gate. I don't want to see him inhospitable, but the castle is sealed today. Why? I have decreed so. Very well, Sir Richard. If you don't wish me to enter your castle today, that is your privilege and I shall respect it. However, I don't think we should talk to each other through a barred peephole, like felons whispering in a dungeon. No. Do you give me your word you will not enter? I shall make no unwarranted intrusion. Uh, the key, Nicholas. <coughs> I'm informed, Sir Richard, that you're in possession of four extremely rare books containing Byzantine plate worth a great fortune. Yes, what of it? I'm also informed that the plates are stolen. Yes, I believe they are. They were stolen from Queen Eleanor. I am holding them until the arrival of the Archbishop. I must insist on taking them into my custody immediately. You dare not enter. It is my duty to enter. I shall use force if necessary. You gave me your promise that you would respect my privacy. I said I would make no unwarranted intrusion. Here is the warrant to search your property. I, uh, I Nicholas, hello, hello there. I, oh. They're coming. Is there any other way into the strong room? Only a, only a small window high up in the tower, but it's impossible. Bring it down. reward for the easiest shot in my life. Are you all right? Uh, 
They've taken the Queen's plates. What about you? Are you wounded? My foot slipped, otherwise I'd have spitted like a goose. I thought they'd cut your arm off. Ah, <laughs> my new chain mail. <laughs> Finest city in steel. <laughs> hey, man! Let me have one of those books. I can't wait to see the beauty of the gold and the rare gems. <laughs> Grace. My Lord Archbishop, I thank the Lord you have blessed this shire with your presence. I come at the behest of Queen Eleanor to see that no further mishaps occur to her property. You come just in time, Your Grace. I fear the Sheriff's Lieutenant has private plans for the Byzantine plate. That is a base lie. I was merely conveying the treasure to a safe place. And here it is, Your Grace. I humbly delivered it into your hands. Perhaps you should ask him, Your Grace, why he would deliver to you books in which are concealed nothing but worthless metal. Whereas the Byzantine plate is actually in his saddlebags. <laughs> Perfidious man with your unctuous claims of righteousness. When King Richard returns, he shall be informed who his enemies are. And I hope his friend. Would your grace deign to sup and rest with us? A most pleasing suggestion. When one has traveled far and in haste, even the most simple shelter and country fare is welcome. <clears throat> we shall be everlastingly honored. Patrick, who does he think he is? <laughs> Lock the gate, Nicholas! The merchants of Nottingham! Where is that rascally knight? That old coin I'll have to out of here! I will my money! My money! Men, please! The Archbishop will hear you! I don't! Archbishop? He happens to be Sir Richard's supper guest tonight. Supper? Yes. Oh! Then I'll hurry back and fetch a new table slot. Yes, they only wives. They can't serve his grace that slop I saw them. Let's get the noble lord's order now. Good idea. Open the gate, Nicholas. Sir Richard's credit is restored. taken the Queen's plates. What about you? Are you wounded? My foot slipped, otherwise I'd have spitted it like a goose. I thought they'd cut your arm off. Ah, my new chain mail. <laughs> Finest city in steel. <laughs> hey, man! Let me have one of those books. I can't wait to see the beauty of the gold and the rare gems. <laughs> My Lord Archbishop, I thank the Lord you have blessed this shire with your presence. I come at the behest of Queen Eleanor to see that no further mishaps occur to her property. You come just in time, Your Grace. 
I fear the sheriff's lieutenant has private plans for the Byzantine plate. That is a base lie. I was merely conveying the treasure to a safe place. And here it is, Your Grace. I humbly deliver it into your hands. Perhaps you should ask him, Your Grace, why he would deliver to you books in which are concealed nothing but worthless metal. Whereas the Byzantine plate is actually in his saddlebags. Perfidious man with your unctuous claims of righteousness. When King Richard returns, he shall be informed who his enemies are. And I hope his friend. Would Your Grace deign to sup and rest with us? A most pleasing suggestion. When one has travelled far and in haste, even the most simple shelter and country fare is welcome. <clears throat> we shall be everlastingly honoured. Hey, you up there! Robin Hood. Thousand pounds reward for the easiest shot in my life. All right. Uh, they've taken the Queen's plates. What about you? Are you wounded? My foot slipped, otherwise I'd have spirited like a goose. I thought they'd cut your arm off. Ah, my new chain mail. <laughs> Finest city and steel. <laughs> hey, man! Let me have one of those books. I can't wait to see the beauty of the gold and the rare gems. <laughs> Archbishop, I thank the Lord you have blessed this shire with your presence. I come at the behest of Queen Eleanor to see that no further mishaps occur to her property. You come just in time, Your Grace. I fear the Sheriff's Lieutenant has private plans for the Byzantine plate. That is a base lie. Robin! Are you all right? Uh, they've taken the Queen's plates. What about you? Are you wounded? My foot slipped, otherwise I'd have spirited like a goose. I thought they'd cut your arm off. Ah, my new chain mail. <laughs> Finest city and steel. <laughs> hey, man! Let me have one of those books. I can't wait to see the beauty of the gold and the rare gems. <laughs> Your 
grace. My Lord Archbishop, I thank the Lord you have blessed this shire with your presence. I come at the behest of Queen Eleanor to see that no further mishaps occur to her property. You come just in time, Your Grace. I fear the Sheriff's Lieutenant has private plans for the Byzantine plate. That is a base lie. I was merely conveying the treasure to a safe place. And here it is, Your Grace. I humbly deliver it into your hands. Perhaps you should ask him, Your Grace, why he would deliver to you books in which are concealed nothing but worthless metal. Whereas the Byzantine plate is actually in his saddlebags. <laughs> Perfidious man with your unctuous claims of righteousness. When King Richard returns, he shall be informed who his enemies are. And I hope his friend. Would your grace deign to sup and rest with us? A most pleasing suggestion. When one has travelled far and in haste, even the most simple shelter and country fare is welcome. <clears throat> we shall be everlastingly honoured. Country fair? Who does he think he is? <laughs> Lock the gate, Nicholas! The merchants of Nottingham! Will this rascally knight! Oh, coin, I'll have a stone out of it! I'll have a stone out of it! I want my money! Men, please! The Archbishop will hear you! I don't! Up! Robin Hood! Thousand pounds reward for the easiest shot in my life! All right. Uh, they've taken the Queen's plates. What about you? Are you wounded? My foot slipped, otherwise I'd have spitted it like a goose. I thought they'd cut your arm off. Ah, my new chain mail. <laughs> Finest city and steel. <laughs> hey, man! Let me have one of those books. I can't wait to see the beauty of the gold and the rare gems. <laughs> My Lord Archbishop, I thank the Lord you have blessed this shire with your presence. I come at the behest of Queen Eleanor to see that no further mishaps occur to her property. You come just in time, Your Grace. 
I fear the sheriff's lieutenant has private plans for the Byzantine plate. That is a base lie. I was merely conveying the treasure to a safe place. And here it is, Your Grace. I humbly deliver it into your hands. Pounds reward for the easiest shot in my life. All right. Uh, they've taken the Queen's plates. What about you? Are you wounded? My foot slipped, otherwise I'd have spirited like a goose. I thought they'd cut your arm off. Ah, my new chain mail. <laughs> Finest city and steel. <laughs> hey, man! Let me have one of those books. I can't wait to see the beauty of the gold and the rare gems. <laughs> Archbishop, I thank the Lord you have blessed this shire with your... We had the money practically spent. So that's why you were all looking so miserable. Do we really have to return all that lovely loot? I'm afraid so. Take it. No, Robin. It's up to you to deliver it. Isn't it enough to have to give it back without having to deliver it? All right, what's the plan? The idea is that you take the plates to the castle of Sir Richard of the Lee. Why Sir Richard? He's loyal. The Queen Mother hasn't heard that he's come upon hard times. She still thinks of him as one of the gallant champions around King Henry's court. Then we won't even get a good dinner for our trouble. While you're doing this, I'll ride to York to notify the Archbishop. The Archbishop? He's very worried about this matter. In the letter, Queen Eleanor says that he'll come himself to recover the treasure if it's found. Well, off to Sir Richard. Nice being rich. It won't do, Sir Richard. It simply won't do. You're asking me to make a complete outfit, head to toe of the finest Syrian steel. Of course. You know as well as I do that nothing stands up in real tournament jousting like Syrian. But you owe me for last year's armor. You lost that in the very first tournament, along with your horse. My horse stumbled. That is precisely why I have to go to the tournaments now to pay your bill and a few other outstanding items. But supposing you lose again? The devil, man! You wouldn't say that if you'd seen me in Coventry in 1167. I'm sorry, Sir Richard. If you want me to work up something from a few plates of domestic metal, for old time's sake... My dear fellow, you know as soon as the harvest comes in, I'll have the money. 
of my fields, the crop... We won't have to rivet it together. Uh, just a few leather thongs to last you through the <coughs> first joust. But, but you don't understand... Yes, Nicholas. I must speak to you, Sir Richard. You know my squire. Squire? He looks old enough to be... <coughs> 27 years as an esquire and nine as a page before that. I shall be dead before ever... Oh, nonsense, Nicholas. You know perfectly well that I intend to have you knighted as soon as I can clear the title of a patch of land to make an estate for you. Mm. You have a visitor. Excuse us. A most unusual visitor from the forest. Master Armourer? Yes, my lady. You can be going along now. What about Sir Richard? I don't want him to have a new suit of armour any more than you do. His tournament days are over. I understand, my lady. You know your way out by the postern gate. I do. Thank you, Master Armourer. Thank you, my lady. Of course I have a strong room. Who would build a castle without one? 